hello guys welcome back to our introduction to programming series okay with python okay so uh, in this actually this is gonna be a very fi fi uh, kind of like boring part of the, the whole series so in this uh, se this part of this tutorial we are not this part of the series rather we are not going to do anything related with program we're just going to go dive in and cover the concept of a pro what's a programming paradigm okay so what's basically a programming paradigm in uh, in programming in python or in any programming language in general so a program let me just give you a quick definition of programming paradigm so this was i got from online so they define a programming paradigm as this uh these are just ways to organize style or structure your program that's basically what a programming paradigm is and it's uh, once you're going into more advanced cons python concepts we need to understand the different ways of structuring our program so to become an efficient developer so there are different opinions on how code should be uh, how code should be needs to be structured needs to be organized there is no best way of doing things right so each each uh, application has like even if i'm building a project each project or each kind of way of doing things has its own uh, best practices right so there's no the best way of uh, anything so each way uh, like quote on course the best of anything uh each uh each thing is best in its own way or so, so, sort of so task what's uh, the uh, programming program that is good for task a uh or programming structure is good for task a might not be good for a task b right so uh there, there, are, there are a lot of uh conflicting risks uh uh debates about what's the best uh programming paradigm to use for each specific tag but there's no best uh approach to use uh you just have to use what works for you best okay uh for this reason it's best to know multiple paradigms and uh, use the one that suits your case the best okay so you have to know multiple and from those multiple knowledge be able to pick which one works for you best and go with that so why do we why is programming paradigm is important in programming so in programming uh sometimes you're writing code and you're not the only person who works on that code right there are many other developers who work on the code or for example you might be employed in a company a startup and you must be working on a project and then you might shift from that startup and move on to another company and they employ another new developer so even that new developer comes and uh, it needs to work with the code that you have been working with if your code is not properly organized uh, it's not following the best standards uh, with it for that specific industry then that new uh, developer who comes in will have difficulty in understanding the code and uh, being able to work with the code base i personally have an experience where i was given the code base of a given startup i couldn't really understand what they were doing because the code was poorly poorly structured so it's very important that you understand programming paradigms and be able to use them to structure your code accordingly okay uh, so pro programming structures are good to know and uh, if, if you are going to understand someone's code you have to know which paradigm they're using right and how do you know which paradigm they're using knowing multiple or list of all available paradigms so you can just by looking at the code you can tell okay they're using this and this paradigm right so yeah so let's look at some of the common programming paradigms so the first one is uh, imperative programming so imperative programming paradigm so uh we have looked at the different programming paradigms are. so now let's look at the the, the, the first one is imperative programming so what's imperative programming this involves the pro, uh, involves the programmer very specifically telling the computer what to do on stage by stage instructions like right, basically tell the computer uh, on the first line i want you to print because like on python right we start executing code from the top of the line to the bottom of the line so we tell the computer specifically what to do to accomplish each task that's known as a uh, a par, uh, imperative program you're telling the program what to do in a chronological order each step on the way so you tell the program print hello world do this add two plus two print out the result that's imperative program you're telling the computer step by step on what to do uh, yeah that's what you tell the computer most of the time but imperative you're explicitly saying uh, specifically saying the computer what to do on step by step the second one is known as the procedural programming so procedural programming um this simply is is is, is takes uh, uh, imperative programming and then takes it to a newer level so basically we take imperative programming and break it down into subroutines so we have different instructions for the computer to perform so we take those instructions and break them in, down into sub parts these are called sub processes or subroutines or it's also called procedures that's why it's called procedural so you take the uh, the instructions that you are you are specified within the imperative programming and now break down into sub break it down into subroutines or sub processes and uh, that's what uh, imperative programming does so each of the processes are called uh when we need them to be right like we have talked about functions right you can call the function when you need it to so while writing our program uh, in collection of function is called uh procedural programming so when you're trying to use functions within your program it's called procedural like you're breaking down your code into functions and you can call these blocks of function as a specific point okay that's procedural now let's move on to functional programming what's functional programming functional programming takes uh procedural programming into a new level 
this takes the idea of procedural programming a step higher so the difference between functional programming and procedural programming is that um functions uh we, we treat functions as first class objects when you're talking about functional programming but in procedural programming we don't treat functions as first class objects but in functional programming we treat we treat functions as first class objects and you have talked about uh, functions being first class objects in python right right we talk about this so if you don't if you, did, you have not checked out that video on functions being first class objects in python or function basically the tutorial on functions go ahead and watch that tutorial and skip the part where we talk about functions being uh, first class object might mean that function can be stored in variables function can be passed as arguments to other functions functions can be returned from uh, uh, other functions functions can be uh, parameters to other functions and stuff like that so those are, that's that's how a function is treated as a first class object and that's the difference between procedural programming and functional programming whereby procedural programming we don't treat functions as first class objects but in functional program we take it a different we take it a step higher and you're able to treat functions as first class objects and you have covered all the, you have look at imperative programming like we have done from the very basic beginning you have look at procedural in uh, in this whole series you have look at functional we talk about function uh, function being first class objects and now we are uh, now let's move on to uh, declarative programming and what is declarative programming now, one thing before we move on to uh, declarative programming, functional programming uh, promotes the concept of code modularity, right? Breaking down your code into different modules, packages, and stuff like that. And we talk about uh, those. That makes uh, we talk about that in the, I think the yeah some tutorials back. We talk about modules and packages and, and basically building the uh, making your code module as possible. This is makes it easier for debugging and fixing uh, errors within your code, right? So. Uh, that's basically it. So now let's move on to declarative programming. So in this programming approach or this programming paradigm, the implementations are hidden uh, uh, from a programmer. For example, if you call, uh, we have this. I have this function here called max, right? We have looked at this function a couple of times. So say max, and then you pass in an iterable. In this case, you're, you're passing in a variable called main list. So what this simply does uh, in here is just that we don't know what you don't know what this function does in the background. It's just going to you just know that whenever I call this function. It's going to return to be the maximum value from my iterable that I passed in. You don't know what how this function implements stuff in the background. The implementation is hidden from you. You can just call this function and you know what to expect, but you don't know what's done to get the output that you are you are you're actually getting. But you just know that if I call this function, I'm going to do this. And that's the whole point of declarative programming, whereby the implementations are hidden. Uh, from a program a programmer does not explicitly tell the computer each step right you, when, you're, when you're trying to get the maximum number from a list you just call the max function you're not in any way telling the computer which step to do to get that result he just passes the result and he he wants and the program produces the result so you just call the function and it produces the result this is possible because the implementation used to achieve the given uh, re result is hidden we don't know the, the implementation of the max function in python you just know that it returns to us the max value of an iterable right under the hood the, uh, the imperative programming is uh, is still being used so under the hood python uh, they, they have imperative programming still being used like we also wrote the function to find maximum value from an iterable like a list right so during the doing the in the background we are still basing on imperative programming so everything that we do functional programming procedural everything falls back to imperative programming whereby because at the end of the day we still have to tell the computer exactly what to do step by step so a uh, declarative programming also falls back on functional programming falls back on procedural which falls back so on imperative so yeah basically basically the programmer does not know what goes under the hood but is aware of the output that he or she will get whenever it does a certain action right okay good now let's move on to the last uh, programming paradigm this is just a list of programming paradigm. i don't know if there are any other uh, any other ones out there but these are just the really common ones okay so let's move on to the last one, which is known as the object-oriented programming, which will, which will be something that you'll look at uh, in the upcoming videos. Because we have looked at uh, imperative, uh, procedural, functional, declarative, you have looked at all that. Now let's move on to what is object-oriented programming. So what's object-oriented programming? So object-oriented programming, this is another programming paradigm in which we use code to represent actual real-world objects. So uh, in our program, so we use basically code to represent an actual real ob object. So like a car, a car, ha a car has some behavior that the car can do. A car can start, right? It can start the engine of the car. A car can have four tires. Those so are attributes of the car, the properties of the car, the car's color, and all of that. We can all, you can use a program to imitate or store that information. So basically, we just use our program to group the behaviors and attributes of an object together into an, uh, behaviors and attributes of a real world object or just any object in under 
yeah and using programming language that's basically we use we use functions uh, to do this and in, pro in object oriented programming they're called methods so we'll look at all those uh, terminologies there's a lot to be covered in object oriented programming uh, but i'll try to make it as much as simple as be i can because object oriented programming you learn much as you go, as you build more projects as you go along so i'll just teach you the very basics and more advanced a little bit of, of the advanced stuff and uh, as we go along you probably learn more and more as you build more projects so that's basically it just representing a real world objects using code basically being able to store the different attributes and properties of a object using code uh, that's what object oriented basically means so uh, we, we deal with the separation of concerns by grouping a collection of related tasks into an object so group related task into an object that help us deal with the separation of our concerns of our, of our program so each object has data called attributes or properties an object can carry out a task right like an object like a car can move so that those are called attributes uh, at the behaviors of the car and those are not sorry not attributes they're called uh, methods so that they, that, that can, the object can perform right so we implement all those using methods under the object and that all the ob uh, methods uh sorry functions uh are called methods when it comes to object when the programming and don't worry about all of those we'll look at them later on okay so that's just a quick introduction to what programming paradigms are so so far we have looked at all the programming paradigms there's the common ones in, in one way or another right so we have looked at imperative programming okay we have looked at procedural we have looked at functional programming we have looked at declarative we have looked at object oriented uh, sorry we're going to look at object oriented programming in the upcoming video so in the last section we'll look at which in the last section which is going to be uh, this video uh, the upcoming videos so we'll start looking at object oriented programming and that's what we'll be focusing on for the rest of the introduction to python course and before we start building projects so we need to understand object oriented programming so guys uh, yeah that's all for this video again it was a much boring video okay of all the series we didn't do any coding but that, yeah, that, that's basically it for object oriented programming and we'll cover it uh, sorry the programming paradigms and uh, introducing object oriented programming and it's very very uh, important concepts not only in python in program every programming language you go to i think apart from c uh, that does not have object oriented programming approach uh, from C++, Java, JavaScript, uh, Python, Golang, all the modern languages have programming, uh, object-oriented programming approach. So we'll look at object-oriented programming uh, as we go along. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Keep safe.